Hi everyone, this is Brian with Anderson Pens, and on today's episode of My Favorite Pens, we're going to take a look at the Bard & Brothers Dip Pen. Let's take a look. Okay, Bard & Brothers plays an important role in the history of what eventually becomes the Maybe Todd & Company that most people are familiar with. Uh, goes through several different iterations, Maybe Todd & Bard, um, before becoming Maybe Todd & Company in the first decade of the 20th century. Uh, the Bard family started making uh, pens around 1846. In 1848, they moved to New York. And in 1849, uh, the two Bard brothers um, added, two more, two more Bard brothers came on board uh, for a total of four, uh, and they became Bard and Brothers. Um, this lasted for a couple of years, and then uh, a fifth brother came in and out. Uh, but uh, in 1851, uh, two of their employees bought out the company. So, Barden Brothers really didn't wasn't around for very very long, uh, and pens uh, or nibs with uh, the Barden Brothers imprint to really fall neatly between 1849 and 1850. Having said that, the first example I have here. It comes in its original box, and when you see these, they're just a, a really interesting. They've got a little hook and a little clasp here that pulls out. Um, just kind of a vinyl-covered, thin leather-covered leather uh, case. And we open it up, and here is our pen. Now, uh, we'll take a look at the box on this one. Uh, it's your typical purple felt, um, one of the original owner's name, uh, Mary Gould, is, is uh, written in there in pencil, interestingly enough. Uh, typically, these would have something in the top that would also have the name of the manufacturer, so uh, it's hard to say this could have been, uh, we, could have, we could be missing a piece here. Um, this could have been just a generic box, but again, these pens were only made for as, as they are for two years, um, so anything's possible. This is your standard uh, dip pen from the era. Mother of Pearl Taper and Gold Fill Ferrule here with, uh, with some decoration on it. And then it extends out and then here is the nib. Now the nib doesn't have a slit because it doesn't need, or doesn't have a breather hole because it doesn't, um, it doesn't work like a standard fountain pen nib does. Uh, but the imprint, if we can see it here, says Barden Brothers, New York. Um, essentially in the hand, um, it's very delicate, it's very thin. Um, this, uh, this particular example is a number two sized nib, but with the taper, it's fairly, it's fairly long in the hand, so you can see how, it's, um, how it fits. You may hold it back on this part here, just, just shy of the taper, um, because on the bottom, we have the indent for where the nib slides in and out. So, uh, of course, during the time, uh, these nibs are all flexible. Uh, I have a great deal of flex to them. You do have to be careful with uh, nibs like this because you don't want to apply too much pressure or you will crack the slit and further and further where it was, uh, where it was cut. So this, is a, this in and of itself is a very interesting piece uh, from about that 1849-1850 period. Um, but What's, what's even more interesting is the next pen I'm going to show you, which is also a Barden Brothers, which coincidentally I picked up at the exact same pen show. So finding a Barden Brothers dip pen nib is, is difficult enough, or a dip pen, much less finding two at the same show and then one of this caliber. So here it is. This is the largest size that I'm aware of, a number eight size 
Barden Brothers nib. And it's huge. And it comes with what looks like uh, an original holder. And holders for these larger pens um, are, are, are somewhat uncommon because, as you can see the difference here, uh, more dip pen nibs were toward the smaller size than the larger size during the day. So number two, maybe number three size dip pen nibs were common. Uh, this number eight size is just, it's huge. Um, same exact imprint, Barden Brothers, New York, uh, number eight on it. Um, you can see underneath, it has a, a similar style pattern. And what's interesting here is you can see some wear, where this was a very heavily, uh, well-used holder. And you can even see where the original owner held the pen. So we've got a wear mark here, and we have a wear mark that crosses over the top here. So that's how the original owner was holding the pen. Uh, we have a wood taper. And there are really no other markings on the pen, but uh, we can be pretty confident that this is equally as old, if not the original, the original holder with this kind of wear pattern. Um, and these are just, just a huge, huge nib um, with, with quite a bit of flexibility to them. And again, uh, there's no breather hole, there doesn't need to be, uh, so we have to be careful. Uh, let's take a, a little dip test here to see how well this works. And because it flexes quite a bit, and I am not, I don't claim to be a calligrapher by any stretch of the imagination, um, it, uh, it, it takes a little getting used to. So I get quite a few, quite a few letters out on one dip. And it really has quite a bit of flexibility. I mean, you can see the difference between these two. Um, in a skilled hand, this would be really a, a thing to behold. But um, if you have any more interest in uh, maybe Todd and Barden Brothers, definitely recommended uh, book. If you can find it, it is the David Moak book, Maybe in America, Writing Instruments from 1843 to 1941. Um, this is out of print, but if you can find it, it's definitely worth, uh, worth the read. And uh, this is... Uh, one of the reasons why uh, it's one of my favorite pens. It's just such a beautiful, big, big holder from a very early, early time. So there you have it. The Barden Brothers Dip Pen, one of my favorite pens. Be sure to check us out online at andersonpens.com, our store in Appleton, Wisconsin, or at any number of pen shows nationwide.